Welcome to Rami Consulting Group's first webinars. Today we have Matt Wallach with us. He is a managing partner at Excellus, which is a demo training, sales training organization. Am I correct, Matt? Yes, it is. And it's we're going to be discussing sales training and uh, how to close a lead and again, how to take the leads you get and actually make sure that you're able to convert them because sometimes the problem isn't getting the leads, the problem is actually closing the lead. So I'm gonna let Matt here do a quick introduction of who he is and what he's an expert at. Yeah, thanks Arjil, I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, I, I uh, help people with the demo process, especially from that point when they get the lead in, getting them into the demo and then getting them closed. Uh, I work with companies around the world on, on doing that I've been a part of SaaS and a part of software for about 15 years, and I love it. I love the industry. I love taking a, a, an idea, turning it into a product, turning that product into a business, and uh, growing that business exponentially. Uh, I've done several. I've been a part of uh, several startups. been fortunate enough to have three of them make it to exit. Um, so I've kind of seen the process from zero to, to uh, when you get out of the game. So. It's been a fun ride for sure. And uh, what I do now is I've always really appreciated the chance to take my teams and, and hire the right people and grow, um, let them grow and coach them and guide them and kind of uh, let them take flight. And I, I, I love it when I see somebody who comes in raw and doesn't really know what they're doing. And then all of a sudden, uh, after some work, some effort, some training, some coaching, they've now achieved amazing results. I love watching that happen. And so one of the reasons why I decided to, to not do that as a captive, you know, uh, part of a company, I now am able to help so many different people. My impact is much greater because I'm able to coach many, many different companies at the same time and see these companies grow and thrive and achieve incredible results on an international stage. So I really get a lot out of the win. I really get a lot out of winning and beating the competition. And so when my uh, clients get those great experiences, get those wins and win their market, I feel like uh, I'm doing it alongside them. And so we're, we're uh, doing it together. We can celebrate together and enjoy good times. That, that's amazing, Matt. Well, as for me, uh, I'm on the other side of the chain. Uh, I specialize in helping companies being able to get that lead and using the internet, digital marketing and SEO and paid advertising, using all of that and being able to help a company just grow their, expand their reach. Because when you're able to expand your reach, all of a sudden you're getting clients that you've never even reached out to. You're getting customers that are just knocking on your door and be like, hey, let's work together. And just looking at the other side of the spectrum, both of us together, we've got a pretty good combination when it comes to the whole sales aspect, whether it's acquiring that first lead all the way to closing it and eventually making sure the customer knows exactly what you are selling properly. So Absolutely. one of the, I think the first question I guess we can start with is, do you think the problem is actually getting the leads or being able to convey the product effectively and actually closing the client rather than just getting spending so much on marketing but not spending on sales yeah i i think they're both problems i think that they're both unique challenges and they're both things that companies need to think about how they're going to solve the challenge though archel is that so many companies especially when they're getting going and even the ones that are that have been around for a while and have, have uh, some success the challenge is they really are so concerned about getting that lead and they don't know how they're going to do it. They built this product. They're trying to see, is anybody going to come to our website? Is anybody going to look at this thing? So they're really so worried and really occupied with, are we going to be able to generate traffic? Are we going to be able to get leads in the door? And the challenge is they never think about what happens once they do actually get that lead. So once somebody raises their hand and says, okay, you got me, I'm interested. Tell me more about your product. I want to talk to somebody. They say, oh, okay, great. What do we, well, here it is. And they just kind of unload everything on them. They do not think about having a structured sales process. They went through all this effort to put together resources and money and some experts maybe to develop these leads. But then they think about what they're going to do once it comes in and they just kind of throw everything in there and hope it works. It doesn't work. You cannot 
through the sales process, hoping that just throwing a bunch of uh, resources at it and hoping that it's going to, to pan out and, and you're going to get some sales, it's not going to work. You need structure. You need some, some process, some formula in there in order to make sure you get people through each stage. Because just like they go through stages in deciding if they want to submit the lead, once they do, they go through stages in deciding if they want to sign up as well. And if you just hope and just unload all of your information on them, hoping that that's going to work, it's not. It's, I've seen it so many times. You have to have a very detailed, very structured, very professional process in order to get the most amount of clients through your funnel and into your customer base. I, I, I really agree with that. When I was just starting out, I realized that I spent so much time cold calling, so much time uh, running ads on the internet. When someone actually came, I just froze. Okay, what do I do now? What do I say? And then I just, I just spoke so much in so much detail that they didn't even get what happened and were just turned off by the idea and I didn't end up closing them. So I, I really do think it's a, it's a good idea to plan out the process and even have to go a step further, have uh, a, a client onboarding even after you close them know exactly what to say in order to just make sure that it's as streamlined as possible because with with maybe five or six clients this may not be an issue but when you start try to scale your company and you're teaching others like as when you hire sales staff you need to know exactly what you want them to say you don't want them to be saying something that's not exactly reflecting the company's best values so so uh what, what would you say is a good sales structure to have? Like what's the key, key components of a sales structure? Well, it, it really depends on the type of industry you're in to get, once you get down to specifics, but overall there is structure that works for any industry um, on a foundational level because people are people and people buy from people. And so you do need to have an understanding of how to work with people and then how to work with the brain when it's interacting with something it's looking to solve a problem. So essentially what I, you know, early in my days, Archil, I had a real tough time selling. You know, I, I was a hot shot, young guy, thought I could do it and make things happen. It, it, it didn't go so well. I fell flat on my face and was not selling anything for a while. Here we are, we launched this product. I thought we were gonna be able to sell it. You know, we built this thing and it should be, be very exciting to everybody. They weren't nearly as excited as, as I had hoped. And so nothing was selling and, and it wasn't working out too well. I started to you know, really get very down on myself. My ego took a shot. Uh, and so I, I, I really worked on it and I read the books and I looked at all the blogs and the articles and listened to all these, these, uh, podcasts and such. And it, it, it started to, to click, but nothing really quite worked perfectly. We started to see a little bit of growth, but really if we wanted to be that big company, achieve those incredible dreams of getting some really nice exits and, you know, uh, being able to have the freedom that we were looking for that little amount of growth was not going to get there. And so I knew we needed more. And finally it hit me and I came up with the process and, and, and what it is, it's the perfect deal process, D-E-A-L. And through that process, it, which was really kind of a combination of all of the other types of processes, but I found the one that fit just right. And it, it really, really makes it very simple to implement it into your business and then scale because you don't want something that works just for you as the founder. You don't want something that works maybe for one or two. You want to be able to take that, boom, it works, let's go. And that's what we did. We were able to scale exponentially. And because of that, I was able to, to create a process in such a way that it works for any company. And so I went to another company, same thing, exponential growth, another one, another one. So three times, uh, we were able to get a great exit because of this process. It makes it so simple. You can plug it in. You can train sales reps very quickly, get them up to speed and get them really crushing deals very quickly. So that process is critical. All right. So um, I guess with the whole process, I guess step one is just nailing the demo. Um, just telling the client, this is what I do and this is why you need it. So I guess, what would your idea be behind the essential parts of a demo? What needs to happen and what doesn't need to happen at the same time? Yeah, good question. So 
really what I've done with this process is broken down that demo. That demo call is so critical. In fact, um, there was a study that came out that asked what was the most important part of the buying process. It asked the buyers what it was that really turned them and 73% said the demo. And so it's so important that that demo is, is going to work. That's a make or break situation. And if you have something that you're just like, oh, we'll just show them our system, but you haven't thought about it. You haven't structured exactly how that's going to work. It's not going to work. It's, you're going to see terrible close rates. I see it all the time with people who come to me and we implement a process and then boom, all of a sudden it starts clicking. So what are those parts? Well, that perfect deal process that we've developed, the deal, D-E-A-L, are those parts, okay? So they're, each of those stands for something. It starts with discovery. That's the D. Discovery is where you are learning about your prospect. You need to understand what they're all about. You need to learn uh, what are their key pain points, where they want to be, what are their goals. You also want to figure out if this is a good prospect for you to work with. You need to qualify them. So not only do you want to learn about them, but you actually need to make sure, is this somebody you want to work with? So discovery is critical. And it's actually one of the parts that people forget about the most, especially newer companies, newer reps. They forget discovery and have a very light or no discovery at all, which can be very damaging to the sales process. So D, discovery is number one. The second one is educate. And a lot of people forget about it. They gloss over it. But really, you need to educate your buyer. Educate refers to a lot of things. You should be, of course, people think that means educate them on your system. Of course, you're going to do that. So that doesn't really apply. Educate in this sense really means you need to educate them on what's happening in the industry. Maybe there's a cultural shift. Maybe there is some big movement that's happening that they're not aware of. If you can educate your buyers on these types of industry movements, they're going to look at you as a trusted advisor. They're going to see you as somebody who really knows what they're talking about. They, if they see you as somebody who knows more about what's happening in the industry than they do, then they're going to see you as somebody they need to follow. They need to go with what you're doing. So even just doing that, when you're not even talking about your company, you can demonstrate some expertise. Beyond that in Educate, you should also be talking about your company history and even your personal why. Just explaining to them why you're doing this, why you believe in that, can connect them to you. And buyers who are connected to the person selling to them actually have a 243% chance more uh, or bigger chance of closing if you can get that personal connection. So it's super important. So E is Educate. The next part, A, is associate. And associate means you're going to associate your product to that particular prospect. <clears throat> now, you can't associate if you don't discover. So if you don't do a good discovery, associate's not going to happen. Yeah. I really want to emphasize that associate can be the most critical part of the whole demo, but so many people don't do it because they're not doing the discovery. What do I mean by associate? Well, if you learn in discovery that their key challenges are lack of efficiency, they're taking a long time with this process they're trying to solve, then you need to figure out how you're going to associate your product to showing more efficiency. Okay? They have a challenge of lack of efficiency. You need to associate to that pain. Your product is the solution that's going to make them much more efficient. And so associate is very important. But uh, like I said, a lot of people, they just don't think to do that. What happens is they get into their demo structure and they just go through their demo, and they just go through a script and they don't realize I've got to take this, modify and adjust to fit this exact situation. That's why you're doing a personal demo. If you just want to run through a script, just do a video. Put a video out there, see if you get a 1% or 2% close rate on it. Otherwise, let's get to 20, 30, 40, 50% close rate with a personal demo so you can start making some big cash. Yeah. And then the fourth one, because we've got DEA so far, so the L is lead. Really important to be able to lead your customers. Lead actually refers to two things. Lead means during the sales call, during the deal, during the process, you need to be the expert. You need to be the one to take control, to guide them through the process. 
This is their first time ever going through your sales process. But for you, it's your 10th, 20th, 100th, 1,000th. You are the expert. You should know what should happen in your sales process. And customers want to be led. They want you to be the expert to guide them, to show them what's going on. But too many say the customer is always right. I'm just going to do whatever they say. Not true. That is not the way to do it. I know we've been drilled that into our head that the customer is always right. Not in the sales process. The salesperson needs to be the one to lead and take control. And then the second part of lead is lead them to close. You need to be able to guide them to the next steps to get them closed. And the best people can do that expertly. So again, the DEAL in the perfect deal process is discover, educate, associate, and lead. And it works incredibly well. So once you have the entire deal process, it's the whole structure system that allows you to be able to close from A to Z all the way to lead the, lead the customer, as you said, all the way from learning your product all the way to ending and get, giving you the money, essentially, to ha use your product. So what aren't people doing right now? What, it, what isn't happening right now? Well, really, it's the whole thing. They don't have a structure. They just, they, like we said before, they're not thinking that you need to have a structure. They think that they've built such an incredible product and in many cases they have, but they think it's so amazing that the product sells itself. So all they have to do is just show what the product does. And they get in and they just start on look at these features, look at these features. The challenge is that doesn't work for a buyer. A buyer doesn't, they're not able to connect that. You need to be the expert to be able to learn what exactly they need, learn where they're going to get, where they want to get to, why are they doing this, why are they looking into something to solve their problems. And then you need to show that your product gets them there. You don't need to even show how the product gets them there. You just show where it gets them. And that's where a lot of people get into trouble is they start getting into the, the details and the fine print of the features and look at this click here. It's so easy to click that. No, no, no. We need to see the end result. What are we trying to get to? What's the job to be done? And so the, a lot of, of uh, people who haven't gone through this type of training don't understand that. And so they don't have a process at all because they don't realize how important it is. And so that's the number one thing is there's just no process. I see it all the time. I have, <clears throat> so I do a couple different things. I have one of my packages is a sales process audit. And essentially what I do is I mystery shop. I act like a customer and I go on the website and I click the link and submit a demo form. And then they call me and they try to book a demo and then we go through it. And afterwards they send me these emails and calls and follow up. And the whole time I'm taking notes and you would be shocked at even big companies that don't have a defined process. All of their reps are doing totally different things. There's no structure to the call. They're not trying to get the information out of me they should be getting. They're not associating their product. They're not leading me. So many things are way off. And yet so many companies think they're doing everything just right. And with just little tweaks, once I show them, hey, you got to update this, change this, start doing this, implement this, bam, all of a sudden they see a turnaround. They see incredible growth. And so once you're able to have that structure, once you're able to make it so it's very repeatable, so boom, new salesperson comes on, they learn it, they're taken off right away. It makes it so much simpler to grow and to scale and reach those dreams, those goals that you're trying to get back to. I, I completely agree with that. When we're starting a marketing campaign or whichever company it is, the first thing we see is that what, what are the audience demographics? What are your customers? What are their personality types? What are their age range? What, how do they think? And I think using those data, using that data, those demographics is important because no one knows your ideal customer better than the company. And I think right now that what people do is that they take their sales reps and say, hey, do whatever works for you. But that at the same time, sometimes that turns away customers because that's not how they think. And no one knows the customer better than the company itself. So I guess unifying the, the entire process is one of the best ways to increase the success rate of the entire demo. Absolutely true. So it's, it's, other than the demo, what are some tips that you, what are the some things you do that helps increase closing rates? And what are the some things that sales reps can change to minor changes to make their entire process much more smoother and again, make it easier for the customer to close their sale? 
Yeah, good question. So when a lot of people say I need to increase my close rates, what, what can you tell me? What they're thinking in their head is, give me that one liner at the very end that I say it and they're like, yes, I want to buy. And sometimes that there is something you can say. And there's little, little things that we, that we work in with our clients. However, increasing close rates happens throughout the whole cycle. If you can just increase your lead to demo rate, which is how many people went on your website and asked for a demo to how many people actually went through that demo, because a lot of them drop off. They go through and they submit a request on five different companies and maybe three or four, they eventually do it. So they're dropping off on a couple of them. And so that right there is one of the most critical factors that we look at that a lot of companies don't even track. They think if somebody signs up for a demo, then they're definitely going to go through the demo, right? Wrong. About 44% of leads go through a demo where a company that doesn't track that, that metric. If you're not tracking that, about 44% actually make it into a demo. That's crazy. Less than half of all your leads that say, I want a demo actually end up going through the demo. That's crazy. When we work with somebody, we want to get that increased a lot. Okay. So uh, our average is 71%. When we work with a company to get them to a great ratio, you can get really, really high on your lead to demo metric, your lead to demo ratio, which is crazy important. If you just did that, I mean, we basically just doubled it. And when you just double it, think about all those extra deals that have closed, even if you do nothing else, your close rate stays the same, you're still going to close that many more deals. So how do you increase close rates? You need to be very intentional at every stage of the process, not just come up with some whippersnapper one liner at the very end that hopefully gets them over the line. If you haven't done everything right before then, if you've been incorrect and not uh, followed a true process all the way through, you've wasted a whole ton of leads already. You might as well get it done all the way through. And then maybe there's one or two cool one liners that might work. All right. So uh, as we all know, currently the situation is where COVID has kind of made some companies dysfunctional. It's hard to reach some buyers on people are working remotely and some companies have just permanently committed to working remotely. So how does this all, all of this apply p currently and past this whole change in the whole business world? How does this apply and any steps we can take to change? Yeah, so uh, a few things on that. First, don't give up. Don't just think, uh, you know, oh man, nobody's buying. I'm just going to kind of shut down. So we've actually seen a lack of activity, a lack of efficiency with a lot of sales teams because mentally they've just kind of checked out. And that's never okay. Definitely don't do that. Keep going, keep going. You never know when that next yes is going to come because there are still people buying. I have clients who are thriving during this. And yes, it can be very industry specific. Um, however, there are some in some tough industries who are still making sales. Uh, one of my clients just closed a $10,000 a month deal yesterday, and you would be shocked at what industry it was. So it, it's definitely still happening. Don't give up. That's, that'd be tip number one. The second thing is look at your process. If you do have a little bit of downtime, whenever you have that, for some people it's the summer, for some people they have a, a slow holiday season, whatever it is for you. And right now we are given this downtime, uh, maybe unintentionally, take that time to do those projects you've been putting off, build out a process. If you don't have a sales process, now is the time to do it and take that time. And I've got a lot of clients who came to me because of this. They said, well, we're not selling, we might as well make sure everything's perfect so that when we do get back to selling, we're ready to rock. So we have people coming into our funnel and we're able to move them through the funnel more efficiently, get more deals closed, and we can reach those goals quicker. Um, so a lot of companies are, are, are doing this very smartly and making sure that they're, they're improving and getting better even during this, uh, this downtime situation with coronavirus. So uh, well, one of the things I was seeing personally, uh, I got a staff of selling marketing. That's what we do. We're a digital marketer team. And one of the things I see all the time is that when we're calling, people are turned off that, hey, we don't have budgets at all. Um, one of the things that we're doing is that we're helping saying, hey, let's just connect for now. There, you don't necessarily have to be 
buying with us right now just because you're in contact with a salesperson doesn't mean you have to buy right now right now may not be the perfect time but one of the things I always emphasize is that don't lose hope and connect with them, build a relationship with them. So when they are back on their feet, you can help them grow even more. So that's one of the things I, I, I completely agree with you is like, just don't give up on that mindset. And right now is the perfect time to be going back and say, perfecting your own process. Yeah, I would agree. And I, I would even take it a step further in not just saying, Hey, we'll talk later, but providing value. If you can say, hey, I, I found this article that might be really helpful for your situation, or here's a, here's a great white paper. I really think you should take a look. Don't worry, we don't have to talk about, I know you guys have a budget freeze. We'll figure that out later. But right now, I just wanna make sure that you're doing everything you can to succeed. And guess what? If you can do that with your clients, when this thing ends and now they're ready to roll, who are they gonna call? Who are they gonna look at? They're gonna see you as the expert, as the person who was on their side and helping them out, not trying to push a sale. And they're gonna see you as that advisor that needs to uh, get them leveled up now that they have an, an open budget. I agree, I agree, completely agree. So uh, that's all the questions I have for you. Any last remarks you wanna add? No, this has been great, Archul. I really appreciate it. It sounds like you're uh, running a great agency over there. Uh, and and uh, people definitely need to uh, take a look at it. But I appreciate you having me on. Thank you so much for coming, Matt. Um, you run Excellus, which is a sales training organization that where you are the managing partner and you are the head over there. So uh, clearly you're real knowledge, knowledgeable. Um, on our end, um, we're really really looking forward to working with you even more, putting out more content. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to Rami Consulting Group's channel. If you're watching this on LinkedIn, then please follow me and Matt. We constantly put out great content regarding marketing and sales. And even if you don't uh, invest in marketing, don't, don't have a sales team right now, uh, grow, this marketing and sales is going to be part of growth no matter what. So uh, investing in this type of knowledge right now is probably the best move you can do, even though, uh, everything's on a freeze right now. So thank you so much for watching and keep stay tuned. We'll bring out more content for you guys.